hey welcome back we're here on location at payday music group studio we're going to speak to mr austin green the ceo of payday himself let's go Two thousand and eleven Grammy Award winner, and of course the founder CEO of Payday Music Group, Kevin. Yes. How long have you been in the music business, and what inspired you to become a studio engineer? Ah, uh, yeah. Um, if I'm gonna actually say how long I've been in the music, then that would have been like maybe twenty years. Professionally, it was from nineteen. 98 until now. Not sure about even the calculation, but from when I was a child, you know, mm -hmm. my whole household was, I gave my whole household problems. Whole household problems. My mother had to come in at after 2 in the morning, plug out speakers. So I've always been um, involved in music, directly and indirectly, from when I was a kid, from when I was going to middle high school. And our music chose me still. Because I got up doing things I didn't even understand what I was doing. You understand? So that was that's my the best answer. You understand? I was basically music I've been doing me. I've been doing music all my life. You know? I took it to the next level when actually Buddhist my older cousin, the world someone some may know the world may not know. He came to visit because Bujo grew with us while we were younger in my house with my mom. So when he, you know, when he got become a star, you know, he came and visited us. And when him come in my room, I said, well, "Auntie, I'm not giving him your star going with. No man, this look way past, and this look real professional. That I'm ever like a five point one surround, so that I don't even know what I was doing. As I come from middle of high school, I even time I record my friends, them as I do some little settings, you know. And him said, "No, you leave school." As I leave school, I have to come check me. So four years after leaving school, did some odd jobs in the round, worked at the airport, you know, do something. But music was all this coming. Played professional football. Uh, it just never had that happened. So 1998 now, we just decided to you not know, go serious with the music. And it was again, Buju came to the house again and said, you know, you're yeah, around. And that's how the music got Kevin. AKA Peter was got involved in music. So that's just the early, early, early stage of my musical life, my musical career. So big up Buju Bantan for that, you know? Alright, wonderful. So after gaining a considerable amount of recognition, you decided to branch out and do a solo rhythm. What was this rhythm and how did it impact your career or start your career? You know, um, while working with Buju, you know, Buju, Buju Bantan only worked with it the best, you know. So basically, I was a nobody who started that in a league of giants. Because, you know, Sly and Robbie come into the studio, Mallory Williams, great man, the greatest keyboardist in you know, Jamaican music history, um, Tyron Downey, um, Bob Marley musicians, Marley, Steven, Ziggy, everybody was like, I was in a hall, like, this really happening because as a as a kid you know you're going to that you was like you know never work and I said Bojo but Bojo is already a huge star but when the impact of the other stars and top musicians came in I was like what I have to learn I have to become somebody great because the, the environment already set the stage for me so during that time now I learned the craft well sleepless nights you know it was hard work though, you know, working. I, I've, I've been working on albums even before even I understand what albums really was. It took me like three years to fully understand what making an album was. So I was going through all that process, that process, that process until eventually now, I reach a point where I say, I'm good enough to start doing my thing. Um, Steely and Cleaver came through, everybody came through Trek Mojo because he's that iconic human being, not even as an artist, as a human being. So everybody will learn from. Learn from keyboard, learn some programming from Sly and Robbie. You know, we just learn. And then eventually we just got up one day and said, right now Kevin, 
I'm going to start my own production. I didn't even have a name for the company. We decided so I'm going to start programming drum sauce. Stay back. When everybody gone home, we just start learning programming, program. Self start, read the manuals. Read the manuals on the keyboard. Practice, practice from our we'll start. Then, when I think I was fully ready now, I built already my name. The vacuum. Because we, we normally used to clean the studio. That's our job as an apprentice to clean the studio too, you know. Because Bojo grew up, brought us up that way. And then I said, every day that I use vacuum. Sure. You know, my name already the vacuum. And that, when it dropped, everybody was like, mm. I went steely and clean it. It came in. Steely, not clean. Steely came in. I said, No, I put it already in my bag. Give me a keyboard, Kevin. We should I play the freezer? And Steely actually, the great Steely actually played over some freezer over the rhythm. And then everybody was like, Yeah, it's a good work. Would you bad? And so the impact came through that. Rather more people are saying, Yo, would you have bad? When people come around, they're bad. They're bad with bad rhythm. And people start came in and work hard. The first recording was a great big artist like medium man, medium age artist and you know lower level artist and went to radio and it got good players. Bush didn't even record on that really, for sure yeah. And we just watched. So that was the impact, you know. I become known to the industry via that just one rhythm. Yep. And from then it was like the roof got I did all that did. Hypnotic I did, 100 watt rhythm I did, gangster beat I did, all kind of rhythm that went. And at that time, Cartel hasn't happened yet, Mofada hasn't happened yet, but I was working with them at the time. And you know, the same time now when they started out, I've already had songs with them, recording with them. And one thing about me, you know, if you're a separate, you're going to say young artist, because I remember where I'm coming from, I remember where I'm coming from. Everybody need a start. You understand? So me always have to use them with me. So basically that's how the impact made me the, the, the transit from just being a student engineer to a producer to a musician because of the great people that came and I worked with. I watched them and I learned from them. Later on in your career, you did some extensive amounts of work with Bounty Killer. Tell us about that. Okay. Um, that was how I first met Bounty Killer was because of previous work that I did. Now, it was a project that was being done by Steel and Cleveland. It's so they wanted somebody to record Bounty, so they were saying, if it's not Kevin recording him as a, as a young engineer upcoming, then no one, it's nobody else. So I was at home about to play ball, some football, I got a class, and he would to come to the studio now. When we reached the studio, this is Assassin, Bujo, and Bounty Killer. So I said, what? Three artists, I said, what, what? I said, the card, and I said, come on, are you want to record this session? Because you know what you are doing already. Right? So me and Cleavey, Cleave, still in the kind of farm of band. Kind of say, yo, I'm like, come here, the first Sunday I record Bounty Killer, I can't forget him. I say, no, Bojo, yo, him, yeah, so me I start work. Anytime, me I work, this man has to record me. And so the band bill. Yeah, um, so we started doing projects together. So any, any producer, any, in the, any big producer will say, yo, fine, Kevin, give me rhythm, give me the money. So I started actually conducting business. So, while doing music with, with Bounty Killer, I learned how to do business, financial business to contracts, whatever. Cause it reached a point that didn't trust me with everything when it comes to business stuff. So there was money coming to my hand and there was jobs differently coming to my hand because of Bounty Killer. So you know, eventually when I passed the level of this recording, start carrying songs then. So songs like Do You See You or They Wanna See When You Look At Me. A lot of songs I started to mix for him. So because people started hearing that now, a traffic came in, like people want producers wanting to mix voice, build rhythm so then because of that connection and Bounty Killer is a magnet for all you know. Bounty Killer in general. You see me from that man go anywhere I do anything. People tend to follow, I just want to be where I'm at. So and then I was with Butcher too, so that was like 
I used to call him the Twin Calabam dance hall, Jamaica music, Bounce Killer, Bojo Band. You're not getting no better than that. As I said, I started at this top. So, work was coming in. He was impressed. The world was impressed. Bojo was impressed. Everybody came here to crazy work. And that's how our relationship built over the years, over the years, you know, until where I'm at now. Even the student, I mean. You know, every, you know that every year, every other day, kid is here with me. We just work. Nothing has changed from 2016 now. So that's how the chemistry built that between me and Killer. Work, you know, work. I did my work well. You know what I did? We worked. And that's where we, And this is where we are now. So you're the founder of Payday Music Group. Why did you decide to take that next step and open your own recording studio? There are many reasons in about one of the main reasons that Kevin is self-driven. As I can see across my chest. I'm a very I'm a person that loves to push myself. I'm never settled with where I'm at or where I'm or where I'm going. It's not I'm not greedy though. I just know that I just think that this is a more universal thing with human beings. I don't think a human should be here on earth and not living to the extreme of their talent or the gift that God gives them. The brain is the most powerful instrument. So that was, that's the main thing with me. I, I'm always keep pushing where I'm at, wherever I'm at. So that is one of the reasons. Um, the second thing is I've always seen myself doing me, leading, doing me, doing my things, no matter how much people are over me and no matter how much power them have, no matter how rich they are, I always want to me. I always see myself as my own boss doing me. And thirdly, there was some mutual disagreement with me and Bojo pertaining to certain things and me never really comfortable knowing that this is my family. So I decided to listen, never start fulfilling what me really wanted for me. So during 2006, Summer, you know, between some fest and that, we did. You know, I was invited to do a show with Bounty Killer, the first some fest I ever did. At that time, I don't know what's on the up. Actually, I, I, I recorded a song with him and um, Bounty Killer from them. This, you know, oh, no, oh, oh, and that put I don't know on a next level song. You know, Killer said, Yo, Kevin, since you did that, as well, you know, so you have to come to the engineer and some fest. Went, show was good. Killer took that some fest. I don't know, did well. A star is born. I decided to right now, this is what me want, you know, my next level is live shows and uh, we need to start moving. So I went to a park and I said, DJ, you know, so we have some disagreement previous, which we don't feel like a discuss and came on. That's kind of personal and we never did that to some of us decided to never leave and do that thing else. Just leave it. When we when walked out and said, I'm done right now, I'm never done it. We never have never named my company. We just know that I have my talent. I mean, I mean, I mean, I mean, I mean, I think I never even work, end up working with Killer again. But besides, I say, either I'm going to leave from England or America, I'm going to leave and do me. So, you know, I get a call from Killer and I say, hey, what's going on in the street? There's a boat that you leave. And I say, yeah, man, I'm going to do me, you know, because this agreement says, so all right. I'm going to tell you to leave, I'm going to tell you to go, but if you want to work, there's a student, by sure and work, you can go there and work. Do you work part time until you can? You know, gain the things and gain whatever you want to do your own. So I did that, you know, travel with Killer for two years touring, save my money, buy up my equipment, got this place and decide to listen. We're not going back because I know what I want. So during all that process, my job already me and Gangsta B, which took the streets by surprise from a producer. Because when I went through the process with Killer between 2006 and 2009, I never did much work. I was like figuring out, so I was mostly touring, not doing production. So when I came back, some I dropped that with him, I just, my father vibes, car, tell Bounty Killer, everybody, which did the videos, we come up with you, and tour Killer, I did the video, and the video shoot. And until this day, I didn't have a name for my company. Everybody just knows like Kevin Productions. And we just get up one day and say, you know, sir, we don't feel like work for people no more, I just don't like. It have to be a partnership and I went to kill and said, you know, say, whatever me do, I don't want to feel like I work for you, I want a partnership. So I'm going to start paying myself every day. 
some company in Canadian music group. That's how the name came about. You understand? So that's how PD music group came about. And I think this everybody should be a boss, even if you are work for your higher boss. Because all that we can own, what we really want to own, that's life. But you must be a boss within a fire that you burn, come out. So your boss, you have more respect for you. So that's how PD music group came about. Personal experience. What can we expect from Payday Music Group in the near future? Well, you can expect the same thing, but we're going to upgrade. First of all, Payday Music is one of the first. Kevin, which is Kevin, not talking about third person, but you see Kevin, Kevin was the first person that recorded some of the biggest stars when nobody now looked for them. One of the first person, I'm talking assassin, Newton Fire. Vibes Cartel, Movado, Miss Alex, aka Lexus, Anthony John, countless and number of them. I recorded them first. I was one of the first youth, the sick few China them. So one of the things where PDM is gonna continue in April is try breaking artists. You know, you know Bounty Killer NG Alliance team, you have Ira, you know, you have Nimran, you have Patex, we will still work with the youth them. See me, you have my artist Janelle. You know so we all, that's the one I think I'm going to keep doing I'm going to change working with the youths them to become some better secondly I'm going to continue to put out the great music like real reggae rhythm opium rhythm you know gangster beat garrison straight music again thirdly we are going at some promotion we're going to do not shows but party kind of show thing. We never know what me, is that never break a new genre in a party where we just now nah, just do a show. We go make the people come and party and enjoy themselves. And when they enjoy themselves enough, we just give them a small show and we go on well balanced. So we're going to promotion too by now and next year and we are going to film stuff. PDF films coming soon and I'm gonna do everything for my company through my eyes, through my lens. So it's it's a lot of work. We don't do one thing. And last but not least, the self driven t shirt line, you see? It's coming. The website is currently under construction because I'm going to sell it worldwide. And so far, I'm going to get orders worldwide. Well, it was a pleasure interviewing you today, Kevin. Thank you so much for having us. Yeah, man, you don't know, you know, big up from the streets, you know, the team, everybody, you know. Thank you for even taking the time to come find me because. I don't know, music man or two, you know, out there, in the crowd, but we still adore music and the music are work. So big up the team, big up Jamaica, big up all of the fans, supporters. You know, as I pay the music group worldwide, out. Unfortunately, that's all the time that we have for this week. I'm your host, Slim. Please make sure to tune in on MediaReleaseEntertainment.com for this and other episodes of From the Streets every other week. And please be sure to follow us on all social media websites, Facebook, Twitter, and Instagram. Until next time, walk good.